Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles. And um, before we get into the Nunez lawsuit, I did want to point this out to you because this will be happening Monday morning, uh, December 9th at 9 a.m. But it's really kind of weird because it says presenter list. Instead of witnesses that it usually lists, it's presenter list. And all you happen to see here is the councils, I mean, the attorneys. So it appears that they have two different attorneys that is going to be Barry Burke and Daniel Goldman. And then we only have one, this Stephen Castor, who did a good job. And so, you know, I think he'll do fine. But it's just odd that they're called presenters instead of witnesses. And I mean, it's like, what, you're just bringing in the attorneys to present their side of the case? Is that what you're doing? I guess. I don't know. So it's kind of up in the air. But yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing on Monday, watching that, find out what happens. yippee ki yay I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I don't know. I may very well wait on this one and do it at double speed. Well, except, except for uh, Castor here, I'd like to hear what he has to say, but it's just very sketchy and it's odd. Again, what hasn't been odd in this whole impeachment thing? It's all just been very strange. And I did hear that Devin Nunes sent a letter to Schiff, but I haven't been able to uh, nail that down. But evidently he used some pretty strong language there against Schiff and I would like to find it, but I haven't seen it yet. Anyway, a couple other things I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you this. I'll put the link down below so you can chime in if you want. But this guy right here, he's a progressive Democrat. And he's going to be running against Jim Jordan. And he goes, you know, fact of the day, Jim Jordan has voted in line with Donald Trump 92.9% .9 of the time in the 116th Congress. That's really pathetic. I mean, really? They think that's pathetic, okay? A Republican voting with the v Republican president. Uh, did they ever do that with Obama? Well, let's go back and check some of those people and see what their percentages were. I'll bet they were higher than that. And I'm a little surprised that Jim Jordan's is only 92.9%. But if you go through and read these, I mean, they are well worth reading. Of course, you know, I had to chime in on that too. But, you know, all these people that I'm seeing listed on here are saying, great news, another Republican who can be trusted. Thanks for letting me know. It made my day more wonderful. <laughs> Jim Jordan loves the USA and desires success for all Americans. And I know Jim Jordan is awesome, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, it just goes on and on. It's pretty funny. And then down here, of course, you had this one who said, well, here's why. And this is his district, which is kind of odd that his district looks like that but you know <laughs> and so this michael harson guy says yes we're still going to defeat him and then when you click on that of course you know i had to put my two cents in with again right you just keep up with that mantra and pretty soon some men in a nice white truck will show up to give you a nifty white coat with sleeves that tie in the back <laughs> and then <laughs> they go on thousand dollars says you don't <laughs> dude no you're not <laughs> i like that one it, it goes on of course you have to click that more replies because this is what twitter's doing these days in order to censor us see they stick us down below that line so people have to actually take another action before they will see our posts and so yeah <laughs> This is all these others, and they're all just saying the same thing, you know, pretty much laughing away at him. <laughs> uh, and no, you're not. Only your, your delusional dreams. And I mean, it's just funny how they all are like this. There's not anybody who's supporting this guy. <laughs> it just goes on and on. And they're all like, nope, not going to beat him. Sorry, not going to happen. And they're all putting the last. And then, of course, they do this too: show additional replies, including those that may contain offensive content. Okay, let's look at what they consider offensive content. 
Yep, here it is. Not on my watch. Ooh, that's real offensive, isn't it? No, you're not. Delusional. <laughs> I mean, those are not offensive. Why would they be under that? There's nothing in there that's offensive. <laughs> Except to the Democrat, right? Anyway, so I wanted to show that one to you. I will put the link down below. I'm telling you folks, you just got to take the humor when it comes. And that particular one really struck me because this guy, he doesn't have a chance. There's no way he's going to win over Jim Jordan. And so he can try. He can try all he wants. But, you know, Ohio deserves a representative who listens. Yeah, right. Like Jim Jordan doesn't. Oh, my goodness. So anyway, I thought I would include that again. Link will be down below. But what we're here for is Devin Nunes sues CNN and reveals he was not in Vienna in late 2018, did not meet Victor Shokin. And this is an article that uh, you can go through and you can read that kind of gives a summary of it. But I have the actual lawsuit document that I'll put down below as well. Anyway, on this, uh, what's really interesting, I got to tell you this, folks, you know, they have this where you can play it and, you know, if you want to go do other things. And I was looking at several different websites and I was working on some other stuff. So I thought, OK, I'm going to click that and play it. And it's like, you know, uh, not a real person. It's just a mechanical voice. And it took breaths. I'm not kidding you. Now, when when I talk, of course, at some point, I got to breathe, right? Well, this mechanical voice breathed in certain places, several places. And it's like, wait a minute. This is a mechanical voice. Why do you have it breathing? I don't know. Did they want to make it sound more realistic or something? It just really, it was really creepy. Plus, it also called him Devin Noonies. And so that kind of took a lot out of it, too. But anyway, so I, I'm sorry. I had to point that out to you because it was just so bizarre. It's like, why would you have them breathe? It just, okay. If somebody knows the answer to that, I would love to hear it down in the comments. Okay, so here it is. Here's the document itself. And it was filed on 12-3. And it was filed in the district court for the Un for the Eastern District of Virginia, the Richmond Division. So I don't know who the judge will be on this, but they did have a trial by jury demanded. So he's definitely wanting to have it go through that. Well, he's the plaintiff, of course. And the cable news network, which is CNN, is the defendant. OK, and as it goes through. I'm not going to read all of it to you, but check out how much he's asking. $435 million. <laughs> but I think that's great. I really do. Now, the 350000 the reason for that is it's another part of the um, judgment. So they're two separate things. So it's not like he just picked this number out of the air. But that's why, you know, the 350000 there. But anyway, if you go through this... <laughs> Love it how it starts out. CNN is the mother of fake news. <laughs> it is the least trusted name. CNN is eroding the fabric of America, proselytizing, sowing distrust and disharmony. It must be held accountable. Amen to that. Yay. Total truth there. On November 22, 2019, CNN published a demonstrably false hit piece about plaintiff. CNN intentionally falsified the following facts. Now, here's the deal. When he is trying to, you know, talk about defamation of character type thing and this whole libel issue, he has to prove not only that CNN reported false things, but he also has to prove that they did it with malice. OK, they did it intentionally because they didn't like the guy. And I think really they lay out a pretty good case here. I read the whole thing. I don't usually read that much when it's 47 pages. But uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting read. As always, I'll leave the link down below. But basically what they're saying is Devin Nunes was in Vienna last year. Well, he didn't go to Vienna or anywhere else in Austria in 2018. And he did go to Benghazi, Libya, and to Malta. So he did make those two stops, but no, he did not go to Vienna. 
And Devin Nunes met with Victor Shokin to discuss digging up dirt on Joe Biden. This is what CNN said. Well, he's never met Victor Shokin. And Shokin has said he's never met Nunes. He doesn't even know who he is. I mean, really. And so here's all the links and everything. And a person close to Shokin has also denied the claim. Shokin denied that he met with Nunes. <laughs> it's just Devin Nunes began communicating with Lev Parnas around the time of the Vienna trip. Okay, well, Devin Nunes did not communicate with Parnas in December 2018 around the time of the Vienna trip, a trip that never happened. So he didn't. And the quote, trusted source of CNN's fake news story was a man indicted by the United States government, charged with multiple federal crimes, a man who faces years in a federal penitentiary, Lev Parnas. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> so, it was obvious to everyone, including disgraceful CNN, that Parnas was a fraudster and a hustler. It was obvious that his lies were part of a thinly veiled attempt to obstruct justice and to trick either the United States Attorney or House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff into offering immunity in return for information about plaintiff, a prominent United States congressman and ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee. There were obvious reasons to doubt the veracity and accuracy of the information Parnas provided. MSNBC justice and security analyst Michael Miller aptly stated, look, Parnas is a fraudster and a hustler with little credibility, but if this isn't true, it should be quite easy for Nunes to disprove which he has, okay, he's easily done that. So CNN, and not only did they put it out just with their plain CNN, but CNN Politics, CNN International, CNN Philippines. I mean, like every CNN <laughs> account they have on Twitter, they put this article out on. But that's for later. Anyway, uh, the parties, of course, you have Devin Nunes here. And really, this is kind of interesting. If you want to know more about Devin Nunes, it tells quite a bit about him and, you know, his history and everything. It, like, tells a lot of things here. And so it was kind of an interesting read, but this is all background of who he is. But one of the things that's going to be very important in this particular lawsuit is his position. Because since he was like the ranking member of the House Intel, which is deeply involved in all of the impeachment stuff, it's going to be a very good case for them to try to say, you know, CNN was obstructing justice here. I was trying to do the work of the people and they were obstructing and trying to keep me from doing my work. And when you do that with a member of Congress, there's some legal ground for there to be, you know, a lawsuit like that. So anyway, I, it goes on and on about all of his, the different committees and things he was on. And, you know, when people were complaining that Devin Nunes is not a farmer, which I talked about in a previous video, he is. I mean, the guy, if you look at him, his degrees were in agriculture. He's a farmer. That's what he does. And it's just crazy that you say he's not a farmer because he's in Congress. Well, you know, my dad's a farmer, or at least he, he always considers himself that. Even though he no longer farms, he hasn't farmed probably for 10 years now. But you know what? He's 91. So, <laughs> you know, he's deserved a little bit of a rest. And in a way, he still farms because he raises fish. So I guess. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, it goes on. And this was something I didn't know. This was a the Hubbard Act of 2008. It was named in honor of the Hubbard brothers of California, Jared, Nathan, and Jason. Jared and Nathan lost their lives serving in Iraq. Jason was discharged as a sole survivor, but was denied separation benefits upon leaving the army. I did not know that. I mean, what they do is if they're, you know, all the members of the family and they have one left, they discharge them because they don't want the entire family to be wiped out. And I assumed, I guess I assumed that when that happened, they gave them the same benefits as being honorably discharged. But I think that was not the case before this Hubbard Act that Devin Nunes put into effect. 
So the Hubbard Act, which was enacted into law, provides sole survivors with numerous benefits that were already offered to other soldiers honorably discharged. It relieves sole survivors from repaying any portion of their enlistment bonus, entitles them to the educational benefits of the Montgomery GI Bill, and allows them to receive separation pay and transitional health care coverage. See, they wouldn't have had that otherwise. And Devin Nunes is the one that got that bill going. So... Anyway, and then the defendant is CNN. Now, one of the things I want to point out about CNN that you may not know is, you know, it's a division of Warner Media. Warner Media is an operating segment of AT&T. Now, I kind of wonder if that's how Adam Schiff ended up getting like Devin Nunez's phone number and John Solomon's and all of those phone numbers. I think maybe, you know, they were in cahoots on that. So anyway, then it goes through, you know, all of the different things that they're part of and AT&T and CNN has these different Twitter accounts C- at CNN, at CNN politics, at CNN, I at CNN Philippines at CNN BRK. Uh, okay. And then of course, you know, at J- Jake Tapper and these are the different amounts of followers, which the reason that they state that is so that when they're laying out the case, The point of it was that they kept promoting these stories to all of these followers. So it wasn't just like, you know, a little hometown paper where half a dozen people read it. It was something that was put out to a massive number of people. And it amazes me, or maybe a massive number of bots. 43 million, really? Uh, Anyway, and this was one of the reporters that helped do that. And uh, Chris Cuomo was another one. They were putting it all out there and they kept using their Twitter feed to put this out against Devin Nunes. And, you know, this is all setting it up right here, this part. And this is, you know, what they have to do. And here are the different codes. And so they had to put that out. They're basically defining who the people are. And then Shokin is a former prosecutor general of Ukraine, Joe Biden, you know. So it has to tell who all these people are because this is all part of the story. And Fertash was a Ukrainian oligarch. And that's who supposedly the first round when uh, Parnas supposedly told Schiff the first time around that Nunez had met with Fertash, but then later on the story kind of morphed and then he had met with Shokin. And so, you know, he couldn't even keep that story straight. So it goes on. And then, of course, they have to define the jurisdiction. It's this is where it's at and all of that. So jurisdiction and the venue. So then the statement of facts. And you have on August 12, 2019, after speaking ex parte with a Democratic staff member of the House Intelligence Committee, an anonymous whistleblower filed a complaint with Michael Atkinson, the inspector general of the intelligence community. The anonymous complaint based entirely on hearsay states in part. And here's just this is from the whistleblower complaint. You've probably already read it. But the important part is that. You know, it was about the foreign influence, and that's what he was trying to say, that Trump was trying to get this investigation going. And, you know, Rudy Giuliani was part of it, central figure, and Attorney General Barr appears to be involved as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then on September 24th, the United States House of Representatives announced an impeachment inquiry between October 3rd and and October 31st. Schiff conducted secretive interviews in connection with the Democrats impeachment inquiry on October 31st. A divided House of Representatives approved guidelines that cleared the way for nationally televised hearings in mid-November. On October 10th, Parnas was arrested at Dulles International Airport on charges that he schemed to funnel foreign money to U.S. politicians while trying to influence U.S.-Ukraine relations. At the time of his arrest, he had a one-way ticket on a flight out of the country. And again, here's all these links. Unfortunately, they're not clickable, but you can probably highlight it and copy and paste. A lot of letters and numbers. Makes it always fun. As a result of his arrest, Parnas's position as a reliable source of information was compromised. And really, it should have been. I mean, it's like, duh, that's who you're going to choose? 
On October 23rd, Parnas was released from custody on a million-dollar secured bond. The court required Parnas to surrender his passport, restricted his travel to Virginia and D.C. to meet with lawyers, placed him on home detention with GPS monitoring, and imposed multiple other restrictions on Parnas. The court's complete lack of trust and confidence in Parnas, as evidenced by the bail disposition, was a matter of public record known to CNN. Okay, see, it was a CNN article about it, and they knew about it. So, see, what they're saying there is setting it up so they can't claim that they didn't know. They should have known. They themselves reported on it. They knew this guy was not a reliable source, but yet they went with him anyway. So why? You know, that to me indicates that they did it on purpose. Not long after his release from custody, Parnas began to concoct a plan to obstruct the impeachment inquiry and ultimately to obtain favorable treatment concessions and or immunity from criminal prosecution. And this is very likely true that he was making some kind of deal with Schiff that if he said these things about Nunez, then yeah, okay, we'll make a deal. Let's make a deal. I think we ought to, you know, like put Schiff in that let's make a deal thing. Maybe Gutfeld will do one on that. If you have not been watching Gutfeld lately, you need to watch his segments on the Adam Schiff. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, they are hysterical, and there's so many of them. And and I can't remember the guy's name, but he looks just like Schiff, really, when they put the makeup on him, and he bugs his eyes out and everything. It's pretty funny. So anyway, uh, with full knowledge of press accounts of the impeachment inquiry, Parnas started to manufacture stories that he believed would assist him in obtaining a deal with the United States attorney and or Schiff. Parnas claimed that not long before Ukrainian President Zelensky was inaugurated on May 20th, 2019, he, Parnas, journeyed to Kiev to deliver a warning to the country's new leadership. Parnas stated that he told a representative of the incoming Ukraine government that it had to announce an investigation into President Trump's political rival, Joe Biden, and his son, or else Vice President Mike Pence would not attend the swearing-in of the new president and the United States would, would freeze aid. See, Parnas is saying this, that he was sent there to tell them that. Okay, that's his story. The problem with Parnas's story, as was reported by the New York Times on November 10th, is that the story is knowingly false. Parnas's business partner and co-defendant in the pending criminal prosecution, Igor Fruman, publicly confirmed to the New York Times that Mr. Parnas's claim was false. The men never raised the issues of aid or the vice president's attendance at the inauguration. Parnas also lied about his connections with President Trump. Parnas told Ward, that was one of the CNN reporters, that when he attended a White House Hanukkah party with Rudolph Giuliani in December 2018, they huddled with the president privately. Parnas stated that President Trump gave him instructions for a secret James Bond mission to find material on Joe Biden. In truth, Parnas and Fruman posed for a one-minute photo with the president and walked away. <laughs> so, and there's Giuliani on it. Just crazy, you know? In addition to CNN's actual knowledge that Parnas had lied to the FEC, resulting in the federal indictment and pending charges, and that after his arrest, Parnas began circulating false and fantastical stories about a warning to Ukraine's new leadership and a James Bond mission, stories that were demonstrably false. CNN also knew from its review of court filings that a judgment had been entered by the United States District Court for the Eastern District of New York against Parnas in 2016, and that the judgment creditor had commenced proceedings in Florida in 2019 to collect the judgment. In other words, CNN has no excuse for knowing about this guy. They knew who he was. They knew he was unreliable, yet they used him as a source anyway. So that right there says that they were willing to compromise everything just to get dirt on Nunez or at least get someone who would say dirt on Nunez so they could report it. And so it goes on, talks about, you know, they knew from prior reporting that he was a hustler and they knew what he was like. They really did. They knew that he was like wolves. And it said they just weren't wolves. I mean, they were radioactive wolves. So, yeah, they were very much, you know, into 
what they were doing and they weren't, you know, shy about it at all. So from all the evidence in its possession, CNN was well aware that Parnas was a renowned liar, a fraudster, a hustler, an opportunist with delusions of grandeur, a man in financial and extremist laboring under the weight of a $500,000 civil judgment and an indicted criminal defendant with a clear motive to lie. CNN and Ward, and again, that's one of their reporters, knew that Parnas was not just a wolf in sheep's clothing. He was a radioactive wolf. So it, it, it just goes on. I mean, when you read through this whole thing, it is like, wow, this is so incredible. And I'm not going to read all of this. This is, you know, kind of a long footnote there on that one. He was a dubious character who could make a problematic witness. So CNN ignored known red flags and proceeded to publish the fake news sponsored by a radioactive wolf in sheep's clothing. And look at this. This is the thing. Okay, you've got this article. This is what was published. And see, Vicki Ward, that was the one who wrote it. And so that's the article that they wrote. The CNN article contains numerous egregiously false and defamatory statements, including that the plaintiff had meetings. Essentially, these are the ones we saw at the beginning. Okay, and here are pictures to prove that's where Devin Nunes was and that's who he met with. I mean, you know, he's got pictures. There he was with the guy in Malta. And, you know, so Devin Nunes has documents, photographic evidence of where he was and what he was doing at the time that they say he was in Vienna. And he wasn't. I mean, it's just very obvious. And so it is a made up story. But that's what they're trying to say. And here's where they said when the story was first shopped to media outlets, the story was that plaintiff was meeting with Fertash in Vienna. That's at Oligarch. After Parnas was indicted and charged by the United States government, the story changed and plaintiff was meeting with Shokin. So, yeah, it, it morphed. <laughs> and so there it is. That's where it's morphing. And again, they accused him of this the Vienna trip and it's like, yeah, he didn't even go there. And these are the accusations that they made, but they're not true, of course. And it's very easy for Devin Nunes to prove that they're not. But the problem that happens when you have allegations like this that go out and are spread as widely as this particular one, which you're going to see in just a minute, the problem becomes how do you stop people from believing it after it's been put out there? And this is what the left likes to do. They throw the mud out and they hope something will stick because there are a lot of people who will read those headlines and that's what they think then about Devin Nunes. And if there are retractions later on, they don't read the retractions. Just pay attention to how many times, you know, something like that is retweeted. And then if there's a retraction, look at how many times that's retweeted. The numbers are just so totally different. And that's the issue we have. That's what happened with like Nick Sandman, you know, they put something out there that was fake and it went viral. And then when the retraction came, nothing. And that's why he's suing CNN, too, because this is what CNN does. They do total fabrications. They don't care. Here's another one. You know, <laughs> again, Vienna. Vienna is kind of at the heart of it. Oh, yeah, Vienna. Hmm. So it just it goes on. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people that are concerned about the whole John Solomon thing, because if you're talking about releasing John Solomon's phone records, which is what Adam Schiff did, that's bad news. Because when you start doing that to reporters, oh, that should get all of them up in the air. But unfortunately, they're not. So anyway, here's where they're talking about. This is a transcript of Cuomo and Ward talking about it and how they're trying to paint Devin Nunes as, you know, this evil little man who was one of Trump's minions who was doing Trump's bidding over there to get dirt on Biden. Oh, anyway, that's the whole transcript. If you want to read it about dirt on the Bidens and then yeah, down here. 
So then, of course, they started spreading it, and it has more of the transcript. This is with a different person. Okay, so here we go. Now, the thing is, CNN coordinated publication of the false and defamatory statements about the plaintiff across each of its platforms. CNN published the CNN article to multiple new target audiences, including CNN's 32 million plus Facebook followers and CNN's 56 million plus Twitter followers in Virginia and around the world. And so if you see here, this was CNN politics. That's the article. If you see here, it's the regular CNN. There's the same article. And it's just like minutes apart. This one was like uh, 9.03 p.m. This was 9.21 p.m. This one's CNN International. And it was 9.25 p.m. And this was CNN Philippines. And this one was uh, 6.38 p.m. on the next day. But, you know, with the time change and everything, that could very well have been about the same time. So... This is the thing. They spread it out there. And this Vicki Ward, she's the one who wrote it. And she was spreading it too about the same time. See, 908 on the 22nd. Cuomo spread it. Cuomo primetime. There are two different ones with Cuomo. I think he has a regular Cuomo account. And yeah, at Chris Cuomo. And then he has this Cuomo primetime. And again, that one, 944 p.m. on the 22nd. And... CNN breaking. Yep. This there. Oh, they've all got dirt on Devin Nunes. So 9.03 p.m. on the 22nd. And Jake Tapper, you know, he had to spread the news. 10.19 p.m. on the 22nd. And it just continued. The defamation continued on November 23rd. Ward tweeted the following. Here's another one. So she just had to keep putting it up there. And they put up on this quote from Giuliani just to try to imply that, oh, even if he did, there wouldn't be anything wrong with it. And then, you know, it's just this is how they do it. This is how they smear people that they put this stuff out there. And CNN has really been working very hard for the Democrats. You know, they are definitely on the list. And so it was clear to everyone Thereafter, multiple third parties republished the CNN article, and that's when you started getting into a lot of others. The walls clothing in on Congressman Devin Nunes. Yeah. And this Devin Nunes got caught. That was trending on Twitter for a long time. And it's like, no. Oh, and Michael Avenatti, of course, you know, he's got to get in on the act. <laughs> uh, Maxine Waters, Devin Nunez is an unhinged liar. Oh, oh, look who's talking. Oh, and, you know, it just goes through. This is one after the other. And that's what they're showing. See, he's got to show how it damaged his reputation. And really, that's what they were doing, especially with the hashtag Devin Nunez got caught because that's not what happened. So essentially, this is what they're talking about. Count one is defamation. And they're trying to say that, you know, they defamed him and that this is causing problems, you know, with his, like, like here it says, the statements impute to plaintiff an unfitness to perform the duties of an office or employment for profit or the want of integrity in the discharge of the duties of such office or employment, including dishonesty, lack of candor, fraud and concealment lack of ethics, self-dealing, and conflicts of interest. CNN's false statements prejudice plaintiff in his profession and employment as a United States congressman. And then, you know, they talk about the defamatory statements would be republished over and over again. And so this is setting it up because when you're talking about a congressman, there are different rules. And so false statements have harmed plaintiff and his reputation, have made false statements with actual or constructive knowledge that they were false or with reckless disregard for whether they were false. And that right there is the legal precedent they're going to have to prove in order to um, make the charge stick against a publication. If he's not a public person and it was like a 
journalistic outlet like supposedly CNN, because it's not really, but, you know, they pretend to be, then um, they're, the standard is not as high. But when you're dealing with these media companies, you really do have to prove that there was some ill intent. And so that's what he's trying to prove here. And here are the statements, the things that they knew. They knew Parnas was an unreliable source. They mi misrepresented the extent of the investigation. And uh, they conceived the storyline in advance of any investigation and then consciously set out to publish statements that fit the preconceived story. CNN deliberately ignored source material and, you know, they abandoned all journalistic standards and integrity. Uh, does CNN have any journalistic standards? I don't think so anymore. So that's what they're trying to say, that it was done purposely on that. And it pandered to lurid curiosity. There you go. CNN never once considered the long-term implications of the extended reach and permanence of its various online and on-air and social media publications. CNN objectively failed to act independently. Rather, it accepted and published the false statements of an indicted criminal, a known fraudster, known liar, known hustler with a motive to lie. So again, it's trying to get to the point where they're showing that there was some malice and, you know, CNN chose to manufacture and publish false and scandalous statements and use insulting words that were unnecessarily strong and that constitute violent, abusive, and hateful language disproportionate to the occasion in order to foment controversy, undermine public confidence in plaintiff, and hinder him from performing his duties as ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee. The ulterior purpose of the CNN article is to advance the impeachment inquiry to seed doubt in the minds of Americans and to influence the outcome of the 2020 election. I think that's very important, too. So when you're going through all of this, this is just giving a restatement of it and, uh, you know, all the different things. And it talks about how Devin Nunes was standing very strongly against the whole Russia collusion narrative that was fake totally fake and CNN was promoting it so they would see him as an adversary and plaintiff poses a threat to CNN because of that and between 2017 and March 22nd 2019 plaintiff emphatically argued that there was no collusion between Trump associates and Russia to hack the 2016 election presidential election and that CNN and others were prepared were perpetuating a hoax and lying to the American people. So yeah, that would, uh, you know, kind of put him on CNN's uh, hit list. So anyway, uh, one more thing I wanted to show you. Oh, this part was about where Nunes has just decided he will not talk to CNN until they apologize. And they're not apologizing. So they're all ticked at him for that. The CNN article is an act of retribution against plaintiff. So that's what his claim is that that's what they're doing. And as a direct result of CNN's defamation, plaintiff suffered presumed damages and actual damages, including but not limited to insult, pain, embarrassment, humiliation, mental suffering, injury to his reputation, special damages, costs, and other out-of-pocket expenses in the sum of $435 million. Oh, I hope he wins this. I really do. And then the second one is common law conspiracy. So, like, they were working to get together and target him. So... CNN acted intentionally, purposefully, without lawful justification, and with the express knowledge that it was defaming plaintiff. So that's what they're claiming there. And again, you know, that's how much he's asking for. So the conclusion is that he's, he's asking for compensatory damages in the amount of $435 million and punitive damages in the amount of $350,000. And so, and then interest, 6% interest per annum until paid. <laughs> Go for it. And he does want a trial by jury. That's very important. His lawyer is the Stephen Biss. I don't know this guy, 
I didn't really take time to go look him up, but um, that's who's representing him. I hope he's a good man and ready for the fight because it's going to be a fight. That's for sure. But you know what? It needs to be done. Somebody had to do it. And I'm so glad Devin Nunes has stepped up. Now, as for where the money's coming from for this, I don't know. And I haven't heard anything about him putting together any kind of like GoFundMe or anything along those lines. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that would be a problem because of his position as a congressman. You know, would they see that as uh, giving him gifts? So I don't know that he can do that. So pray for him. Pray that the money will be there if he needs it. I don't know what's going to happen. But boy, if he wins, he's going to be a very rich man. And he deserves every penny of that. Because he has put, because he has been put through you know what for the last few years. So anyway. And then I wanted to point out one thing to you. I did a video and I uploaded it to BitChute. It's called My Thoughts on the Waters segment on You Know Who. And it still hasn't come up yet. It just says it's processing. So I don't know. I hope I'm doing things right. I just can't figure it out. And I tried. I'm supposed to be like, you know, getting my whole channel over. And it just keeps telling me that they're in progress. And this one, it did say it backed it up, but I can't find it. So I don't know what's going on, folks. I'm trying. <laughs> I just, yeah, BitChute's not my friend right now. So anyway, uh, but I will be there. And again, if something happens to this channel, then um, you'll know where to find me. But I really do like uh, YouTube's platform better for posting things. This is not as easy to navigate, but maybe as they get more videos on there, they'll grow. I don't know. For now, I've got one video <laughs> and maybe part of another. I don't know. Maybe by the time you see this video, this one will be up and running. I don't know. But anyway, in case you didn't see that video clip, it's in there. It's just in segments because in order to use it as fair use, I could got to do commentary on it. So I did. And you'll be able to see the whole clip. But anyway, because the one that I found it on isn't on there, it's not valid anymore. So Anyway, that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by, and I'll see y'all later.